down. So it's not working out nicely, not playing nice. So I had two, and I'm trying to get rid of these two. So let's assume this electron kind of hangs out over here with this guy. This one comes down here. This one's going to join this guy. And then this guy has no friends to hang out with. So what's, uh, what's going to happen here? So <clears throat> are we going to just keep doing this? Is this like a, the never ending song? Is it just going to go on forever and ever? Um, no. Alex, you're on the right track. If we have, as it turns out, if we have three brilliums, the, each brilliant wants to get rid of two, so if there's three of them, we'll try to get rid of six. If we had two nitrogens, each one wants three, so if we have two of them, they'll each want to gain six. So what I'm going to do is this. This is going to get really messy, but I'm going to go for it. Um, I have seven protons. I'm just going to simplify this a little bit for right now. I'm going to draw nitrogen, and I'm going to draw nitrogen. I'm going to have a beryllium. I'm going to draw beryllium, and I'm going to draw beryllium. All right, so this nitrogen uh, nitrogen normally has these one, two, one, two, three, four. Five. This nitrogen normally has two, and one, two, three, four, and five. Beryllium had the two, and then it got rid of two. Now, I'm going to kind of butcher this point to death, and it'll be so much easier uh, when we continue on with this next day, so don't get too caught up in this right now. It's, I promise it's going to get more straightforward. Uh, beryllium's four, right? So we had four. There's one, two. I'm going to draw one here, one here, and then one, two, and one here, and one there. All right, let's see if we can make this work. I'm going to take this because it's trying to get rid of two. That one's going to go there. That one's going to go there. That one's going to go there. Did I draw too many? Put it in the wrong shell. Doesn't help things. All right, so that guy goes there. This guy's going to go here. This guy's going to go here, and that guy's going to go here. So by having the three beryllium's and two nitrogen's, it's all going to work out together, and everyone's going to be happy. So I'll draw one last little final diagram here. I have nitrogen, I have nitrogen. So these nitrogens are now going to gain all these electrons, and they will both have a charge of minus 3. My beryllium's have all lost electrons, and they will all have a charge positive 2. I'll draw in my electrons here in a second. What is B3N2? Uh, B3N2 is beryllium nitride. That's what we actually call it. What is it in real life? I have no idea what it does or what it is. I'm sure you could Google it. All right. 
Whew, it's a lot of work. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There we go. So that is literally the most, um, the most complex example I can come up with for Bohr models. So if you were, if you're good to there, you're okay. Um, and Abby, when you said, yeah, common factors comes into play. Well, yeah, we have an overall charge of minus three and minus three together gives us minus six. So we have to balance that out with plus two, plus two, and plus two, which is plus six. This is a lot at first. We're going to look at an easier way to do this um, next day because I've run out of time. But the idea is that there's easier ways to do this. As scientists, we don't use Bohr models. Um, we need to use Bohr models at the beginning to kind of try to understand how this stuff works. Once we've kind of wrapped our brains around why the electrons are getting transferred in the ways they are, why beryllium's interested in giving up two, why nitrogen is interested in gaining three, once you can kind of wrap your brain around that, the stuff we're going to do later on is going to make a lot more sense. So uh, I'm going to, just for the sake of trying to get through some of this notes, I maybe throw up a, one or two more slides and then we'll, we'll call her a day. Uh, boron nitride. Uh, boron and nitrogen are both, sorry Alex, I misunderstood your question a little bit. What is boron nitride? I don't, I don't know what it is. All right, so everything we've done up to now has been ionic bonds. Maybe I'll just jump. Mm. Yeah, I don't want to talk about that. I'm just going to start, start at the beginning um, next day. Why do boron and carbon and silicon have blank charges? Uh, again, good question. The atoms, uh, when you get into the middle, like carbon, how many atoms, or how many atoms, how many electrons does carbon have in its valent shell? I'm just going to get right out of there, so we don't want to deal with that right now. Uh, if I'm carbon, my valent shell has four electrons in it, which is a problem. So we're always like, well, is it going to gain or is it going to lose? Well, in the case of carbon, it's four. So is it going to gain four or lose four? It's kind of weird. It's in this like no man's land in the middle. So what happens is carbon, they, they don't have full shells. They have, you know, four carbon silicon both have four in their outer shell. And carbon and silicon become really important elements, which we'll look at when we deal with covalent bonds. But generally speaking, uh, because they don't know whether to lose or gain, they don't bond the way we've just indicated here. It's just not something they do. So they bond in a different way. They share electrons instead of transferring them. So that's kind of something that happens with, uh, with carbon. Uh, boron, same deal. It has uh, five protons, so it only has uh, three electrons in its outer shell, and it behaves as a non-metal. So there's lots of kind of things we still need to talk about before we can fully wrap our heads around that stuff. Let's just look at the learning guide, and then I'll set you guys free for the day. Uh, so we did nothing in terms of notes today, but I have a feeling we can probably... Nope, 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 nope. All right. Um, I'm, I'm just going to leave it at that. And you're thinking, Mr. Borden, you spent an hour doing something that we won't have to worry about. Well, yeah, you're going to have to worry about forming compounds. And I think it's more important to understand the why behind the things we're going to do uh, next class instead of um, just kind of blindly taking them at what, I, what I'm saying. So uh, forming bonds the way we did, then you're good to go. But it's not uh, anything in the notes or there's no examples based on it. So I want you to just kind of understand the how behind it. We will continue on with this next day. Um, for those of you who are all caught up, awesome. And if you're not, 
Think of this as a great opportunity for you to get caught up because there's nothing really to do for kind of work beyond what we did in class today. So um, there's nothing from the learning guide. I mean, you could go through the notes on your own and try to you know, get a bit ahead, which is fine if you're just looking to do some work, but take a break maybe. Um, we'll continue on with this stuff next day and we'll start to get into some more new stuff. <laughs> yeah, just reading your question, Alex, can they just loan them? They share them. They don't loan them and expect them back. They just share them. It's like, hey, let's just share these things and um, we'll be good to go. So that's it. Um, hopefully you guys can come to uh, McWilliams tomorrow. I forget what time the virtual field trip. I think it's like uh, 1045 or 11 or something like that. Uh, we're going to connect with the Palm Beach Zoo. I've never connected with them, but it should be good. And um, yeah, hopefully we'll see you tomorrow. So have a great afternoon, guys. We'll, if we don't see you tomorrow, I'll see you on Monday. Thanks. Bye.